Hey guys, this is Malepe Ramon here. I need help with maths. Here's the question paper. Okay, so this question is a great functions question because it's got two different parabolas on the same set of axes, which means it can get a little confusing which parabola you're dealing with. But let's take a look at this question. It says, sketched, not ideally drawn to scale, are the graphs of f of x, which is given to us as x squared minus 4, and g of x, which is given to us as negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. So f is the concave up, because it has a positive a value, and g is the concave down. It has a negative a value. e is one of the x-intercepts of f. Remember, there are two x-intercepts. So over here, we have one, which is e, and the other one, which is just this random x-intercept over here. f is one of the x-intercepts of g. So with our concave down parabola, f is this x-intercept. C and D are the points of intersection of F and G, okay? So here, if you look at our graph, we've got C and D where the two graphs intersect with each other, okay? So now it says, determine the coordinates of A, the turning point of G. So if we look, we've got point A here. You can find the turning point by doing one of two things. Firstly, you could complete the square on the equation of g and put it into turning point format and find the coordinates easily from there. Otherwise, you could differentiate because remember, if we take a tangent here, its gradient is going to be zero. So if we differentiate and make that equal to zero, the gradient's equal to zero, it means we find the coordinates of that turning point. But I am going to complete the square. So we have g of x is equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 3, okay? So, to complete the square, firstly we need to take out this negative as a common factor because you can't have a negative in a squared bracket, okay? So we get negative x squared minus 2x. That plus 3 is a constant. It's not going to affect our completing the square, okay? So remember, when you complete the square, you take the square root of the first term, which is x, and you halve the coefficient of the x, so minus 1 squared. You then subtract the square of this number here. But because we've taken out a negative, we're going to have to add the square of that number there. Okay? And then plus 3 is that constant left over. So now we get negative x minus 1 all squared plus 4. Now remember, these numbers here, give us the coordinates of the turning point, which means that A sits at 1 and 4. If we look at our diagram, we can see that that suits perfectly. Remember, the diagram's not drawn to scale, so this would be 1 here and 4 up there. Okay, easy peasy. Secondly, it says that AB is parallel to the y-axis. What does that mean? It means that there's no change in x value. Remember, y, the y-axis, sits along the line x equals 0. There is no change in x, only a change in y. So if these two are parallel, it means that there's absolutely no change in x over here. Okay? Remember, we found that a sits at 1 and 4, which means that b sits at the same x value and then some or other y value. Okay? Secondly, they gave it to us that B sits on F. Now, if we go back, remember, F is given to us as negative X squared minus 4. So, to find the Y coordinate of B, we simply substitute 1 into that equation. So, F of 1 is equal to X squared minus 4. We simply substitute 1 into that X squared. We get negative 3, which means that B so it's at 1 and negative 3. Okay, easy peasy. Calculate the length of EF. Okay, remember, E and F are the x-intercepts of F and G. So firstly, we need to find the coordinates. Okay, so E 
is an x-intercept of f. And f was given to us as x squared minus 4. Remember, x-intercept, you make y 0. So we get x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, which means that x squared is equal to 4, which means that x is equal to either positive or negative 2. Remember, there are two x-intercepts, one over here and one over here. Evidently, E sits on the negative x-axis, so E sits at negative 2 and 0. Now, if we find the coordinates of f, we make negative x squared plus 2x plus 3, which is the graph of g, because remember, f is an intercept of g, equal to 0. x-intercept, y equals 0. If we divide the whole thing by a negative, we get x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And easily factorize, we get x minus 3 and x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to 3 or x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so if we look at our diagram here, f is definitely on the positive x-axis. So the positive number here is 3. So f sits at 3 and 0. Now we have our two coordinates here we can see that because they sit both on the x-axis, there's going to be no change in y value there. So that distance there is purely, remember, E sits at negative 1. Let me just double check that. It's negative 2. E sits at negative 2, 0, and F sits at 3, 0. So if we have two units there, plus another 3 there, we're going to have 5 units. EF is equal to 5 units. Okay, easy peasy. Lastly, it says for which values of x is f of x less than g of x. So that's basically asking for which values of x does this parabola of f lie below this parabola of g. Okay, so remember we have the intersection points here. If we look at this interval over here, we can see that f is below g, or g lies above f. So that is the interval we're looking for. So we'd have to find the coordinates of their intercepts. How do we do that? We make their equations equal. So we get x squared minus 4 is equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. We're going to get 2x squared minus 2x minus 7 equals 0. Okay, so immediately I see I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus b, which is 2, plus or minus b squared, which is 4, minus 4 multiplied by a and c. Okay? All over 2a, which is 4. So... If I get my calculator out, punch that in, I'm going to get 2 plus, first of all, 4 minus 4 multiplied by 2 multiplied by negative 7, all over 4, and that will give me 1 plus root 15 over 2. Okay, so if I go back to up to my graph, because I'm running out of time here, that will be this intercept here, 1 plus root 15 over 2. That's the x value, and you'll have a y there. Remember, with the quadratic formula, over here we're going to have 1 minus root 15 over 2. So, in order to find the interval there, you're going to have to write the interval between those two intercepts. So, x needs to be greater than this here, and less than this x value here, 1 plus root 15 over 2. And that is where F lies below G. 